In this video, you will learn about what is inductive reactance in detail and how you can calculate it. We will also use simple simulations for better understanding. And to get all these details, you need to watch the video. Let us start by understanding the resistance. Now resistance we know that it is a very simple a device and what it does is it simply opposes the flow of current. Now it, it really doesn't matter if it is 5 ampere, 10 ampere or 100 ampere magnitude of current doesn't matter. Any magnitude of current you pass through it, it's going to oppose or if you pass DC, if you pass AC, doesn't matter. It's simply going to oppose, right? And that is the reason why you will see voltage and current are perfectly in phase with each other in case of resistive circuit why is that because let's say when we are passing alternating current through it it's going to oppose so definitely when current is maximum the voltage is also going to be maximum why is that because of the ohm's law now what ohm's law tells is that that voltage is directly proportional to the current provided the resistance is constant right so if current is going to increase your voltage is also going to increase no doubt about that and same thing happens in case of resistive circuit in at every instance so what is happening when current is maximum let me put it in this way current is maximum your voltage is also going to be maximum when current drops to zero that current becomes minimum your voltage also becomes minimum and as a result you will see the waveforms of voltage and current are perfectly in phase with each other now in phase means what they reach zero at the same time they goes to their peak at the same time they again become zero at the same time again to the negative peak and again to the zero that means in phase with each other so that is about resistive circuit now let me quickly show you one simple simulation and then you will have more clarity about the waveforms in resistive circuit so here we have a very simple ac circuit we have a ac source we have connected uh, resistance to it as a load and we are measuring current and voltage across it by connecting ammeter and voltmeter now you see the waveform here the green waveform shows the current now when current is maximum the voltage is also maximum both are at the same uh, peak positive peak and when current becomes zero voltage also becomes zero and when current goes to the negative peak the voltage also follows the same path that means the voltage and current are perfectly in phase with each other now, this is about a resistive circuit and this is important that you understand it so that you will understand the difference between inductive circuit and resistive circuit now let us talk about the inductive circuit now we know that inductors you know do not behave uh, same as that of a resistor now what inductor says is okay if you are passing a constant current through me let's say you are passing 2 ampere con consistently through me i am okay with this no problem or maybe 5 ampere continuously i am okay with it or maybe 500 ampere continuously I am okay with no problem with it but in case of resistance it will oppose any any magnitude of current that you will pass inductor says I am okay with that but I will not allow any change in the current so that means if you are passing alternative current through an inductor it's going to oppose that it's going to oppose any change in current so inductor will allow constant current to go through it but it will not allow any change in that current it will try to maintain that current constant and how one can maintain current constant again that takes us back to the ohm's law now ohm's law is saying okay if your current is changing let's say your current is increasing and your resistance is constant then how you can vary the current of course by varying the voltage right if you vary the voltage your current is going to vary so what inductor does is when current is at uh, the positive peak let's say i max so this position right here when current is at its positive peak what inductor will do inductor will drop the voltage across it so that 
along with the voltage current will also come down and it will become again as uh, it will go to its original position so at that time voltage is zero clear and when current is zero that is this position in the waveform in that case inductor will push more voltage so that current will become again uh, to its original position so in that case voltage become maximum so when current is maximum your voltage is going to zero and vice versa let me show you that using the simulation uh, with the help of simulation it will be more clear to you so let us go to our simulation here let me go to inductive circuit yeah so again this is a very simple circuit we have a voltage source here we all have connected a ammeter and then the, there is a 10 milli henry inductor and across that we have connected a voltmeter now let us see the waveform here now on top you can see the waveform the green waveform represents the current and it is pretty clear that you see when current is maximum the voltage is zero and what does that mean that means inductor is trying to bring down the current by dropping the voltage the second position when current is at zero the voltage is at maximum what does that mean it means inductor is pushing more voltage so that it can bring back the current to its normal position or the previous position so that is also very very clear through this waveform and that is the reason why you will see uh, in inductive circuit voltage and current are 90 degree opposite with each other they are not out of phase like a resistive circuit this is really important that you understand uh, these concepts now let us go back to our whiteboard here so basically uh, if we have to write it in the proper language then we can say inductor opposes the change in current by dropping a voltage which is directly proportional to the rate of change of current clear so what inductor is doing they oppose the change in current first of all and how they oppose they oppose by dropping a voltage so basically when inductor drops a voltage it is a reaction that inductor is giving against the change in current now this current is a directly proportional to the rate of change of current sorry the voltage is directly proportional to the rate of change of current so if your rate of change of current is higher the voltage drop will also be higher and the same is also true for opposite if your rate of change of current is less the voltage drop across the inductor will also be very very less now this is the opposition that inductor is offering now this opposition is definitely very much different than what a resistor offers right and therefore we have a dedicated name for this opposition and this is called as reactance and not a resistance okay this is called as reactance now since this reactance is offered by inductor it is called as inductive reactance clear very simple to understand but provided you understand the concept how voltage and current is not phase is not uh, in phase with each other in case of inductive circuit so since this is offered by an inductor this is called as inductive reactance clear now there is very interesting thing here in the statement that the voltage drop is directly proportional to the rate of change of current that we have already seen now let me also make things very clear to you by showing this in the simulation part so let us go to our simulation here so here is our circuit we have a voltage source with 500 hertz of frequency just for our understanding purpose and then we have uh, an inductor connected now what we are going to observe here is what is the voltage drop across this 10 milli henry uh, inductor so let us see that now you have to focus on uh, this value rms value here which is 44.5 millivolts now when we talk in ac circuit we always talk about rms value and why is that and what is rms value if you are interested to know about it then i have a dedicated video on that i'll provide link for that video down in the description you can check that out uh, you can check that video out after this video so when frequency is 500 hertz the rms voltage drop across an inductor is 44.5 millivolts now what i am going to do i am going to double the frequency now as per 
our information the voltage drop across an inductor should also double because we are changing the rate of change of current now frequency is what frequency is nothing but the rate of change of current so i am i have doubled the frequency i have made it 1 kilohertz now let us see what is the voltage drop so here you can see the frequency is 1 kilohertz and the rms voltage drop across our inductor is 88.4 millivolts so it is again double because the frequency is double so what we have learned few minutes back is proved here with the help of this simulation and you can also see the waveforms they are out of phase by 90 degree voltage and current are out of phase by 90 degree so that is the inductor's property now let us see how we can calculate the inductive reactance so basically inductive reactance is or uh, let's say reactance is represented by letter x so let me take this okay letter x now since the reactance is offered by an inductor we always write l as a subscript to x so the xl represents the inductive reactance now this is calculated by a simple formula given by 2 pi fl now 2 pi is what 2 pi is the number of radian uh, uh, you know alternating current is rotating at that is 2 pi f is we saw it is frequency and l is inductor in henry inductance in henry so using this simple formula we can calculate the inductive reactance let us also solve one simple problem so that things get very clear uh, in your mind so here is a simple circuit that we have we have 100 volts supply with 500 hertz frequency and we have connected it to 10 milli henry inductor so we need to identify current flowing through this circuit so to do that what we have to do we have to first identify the inductive reactance xl how we can identify that is by using the formula 2 pi fl so let us put values in this formula so 2 pi remain same times uh the frequency of 50 hertz times the inductor so this is in milli henry we need to convert it into henry so 10 raised to minus 3 so this going to give us 3.141 ohms always remember reactance is always measured in ohms just like resistance so since we now have xl xl is nothing but it's similar to resistance okay so now we can use this to calculate our current so again we can use ohms law so v is equals to current times the xl now resistance will not come into the picture because we are talking about reactance so please don't write r there it should be always xl so simply what we can do is to find out the current we can just rearrange our formula so this becomes this and now let us simply put the values we have 100 volts as the voltage and 3.141 as the inductance so that's going to give us 31.8 ampere our current so this is how you can identify the current in an inductive circuit uh, using the formula of inductive reactance now this is very important you understand because if you understand this you will also going to understand the capacitive reactance which we are going to discuss in our next video So now let us quickly summarize this video what we have seen so far inductor opposes the change in current by dropping a voltage directly proportional to the rate of change of current this opposition is called as reactance now since the reactance is offered by an inductor we call it as inductive reactance it is represented by xl and measured in ohms we can calculate it uh, using the formula that is 2 pi fl 2 pi we saw it's a number of radian alternating current is uh, rotating at f is frequency and l is inductor right so i hope uh, you are now very clear about inductive reactance and how you can calculate that now i intentionally gave you uh, the detailed video so that you will understand it clearly otherwise i could have given you simply the definition and the formula for it but in this way the concept will be clear to you and you will remember it for a long time so i hope uh, the video helped you and if it did do like and share the video that really helps the channel to reach to new people and i really appreciate that in the next video we are going to talk about 
uh, capacitive reactance so make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any of the updates so thank you for watching guys i'll see you in my next one but till then keep watching keep learning